continue to crush terrorists and destroy their hideouts and gatherings. Iran affirms that the best solution to the Syrian crisis is to support the people's right to determine their own future without foreign intervention. Happy New Year, everybody. A religious mass was held today at the Mariamit Cathedral for the Greek Orthodox in Damascus, marking the New Year. The mass was headed by Patriarch Yohanna X Yazuji of Antioch and all the Orient for the Greek Orthodox. In a word he delivered on this occasion, the Patriarch called for dialogue and peace to build Syria, praying to God to preserve Syria secure and stable. In Aleppo and on the occasion of the New Year, citizens crowded in a Suleimaniye neighborhood, lighting candles and praying to God for peace and stability to prevail throughout the country. They recalled with tears in their eyes how the armed terrorist groups had destroyed their homes and schools and obstructed their means of livelihood. In his letter on the occasion of World Peace Day, Pope Benedict XVI warned against the threat of militants and extremists who tend to distort the true image of religion. The Pope pointed out that our current times are characterized by more violence and bloodshed on a large scale. He expressed anxiety over the spread of conflicts in the world and the absence of equality and justice as the gap between the rich and the poor keep widening. The Syrians are in favor of dialogue instead of arms as new parties continue to join the former process. Within this context, the forces and parties of the Democratic National Bloc held a press conference at the Umayyad Hotel in Damascus, during which they declared their determination to prepare for a forum of dialogue in Damascus. New parties, the People's Party, Syria the Homeland Party, and the Patriots Rally in the Land of Expatriation Party have declared their step of joining the National Democratic Bloc to unify efforts, promote the national political movement, and recruit potentials, ideas, and programs in order to find a way out of the crisis in Syria and build the country with the hands of all its citizens. Under the title, The Syrians Say No to Arms and Yes to the Dialogue of the Mind, ideas were raised during the Democratic National Bloc's Party's conference, voicing resolve to work earnestly in order to delineate Syria's future and emphasizing support for the Syrian Arab Army to perform its task against those who carry arms. The conference rejected acts of violence and foreign intervention and called for organizing popular committees within a legal framework, urging for lawsuits to be filed and memos to be presented to the UN and international organizations against the persons and institutions that instigate the Syrian people.
The participants also called for organizing a national forum of dialogue for the national opposition's parties and commissions to solve the crisis in Syria and outline the mechanisms needed in order to keep Syria free, strong and dignified. In Hama, a unit of our armed forces killed many terrorists and injured dozens of others near the town of Al Mubarakat, Hama countryside, seizing their weapons. Among the terrorists killed there were Khalid Ahmed Al Ahmed Al Kleb and Khalid Mahmoud Al Khalid. Units of our valiant Syrian Arab army also eliminated a number of mercenary terrorists in the town of Morak, seizing their different kinds of weapons and destroying their equipment. It's the fate of all who are tempted to encroach on the Syrians and their public or private property. Morik is like other towns which were hit by the terrorism and crimes committed by some mercenary groups that wreaked havoc and devastation, pushing its residents to seek help from the Syrian Arab army who immediately responded to the call. So some of the army units cleared the area of the abominable Takfiri groups, killing many of them and forcing the rest to flee away and to announce their surrender. Units of our valiant army also seized large quantities of weapons, including automatic guns, large amounts of ammunition, RPG, launchers, different kinds of machine guns, Doshka, PKC and NATO guns, as well as a mortar gun and its shells. Our armed forces also pounded many terrorist hideouts and destroyed them completely and also destroyed a pickup equipped with Doshka with many grenades and pistols asserting that Syrian Arab army is able to protect Syria and its people. In Homs, our army units clashed with armed terrorist groups in the War Taldaw in the city's countryside, killing a number of them, including the group's leader, Fadi Bakur, in addition to Majid al Yusuf. In Homs, army units seized amounts of weapons, ammunition, and sophisticated communication devices in Darab Alba. The seized weapons included mortar rounds, shotguns of Doshka machine gun, shotguns of PKC machine gun, grenades, bombs, RPG launchers, in addition to sophisticated communication devices and a field hospital. A source told Sana that various weapons and ammunition were also seized in Hassia city and Homs countryside. The army also arrested a number of terrorists including Khalid Hassoun al Jaloud, nicknamed Abish Shanagel, the leader of an armed terrorist group called Battalion of Al Harar Hassia, Brahim al Homsi, Sanad Marwan al Rawli, Muhammad Deeb, Hayyan al Ali, and Mustafa Deeb. An army unit destroyed a mortar and a locally made platform with four rockets mantled on it and targeted terrorist gathering in an Nasaria area in Tel Dau, Homs countryside. Iran stressed that the best solution to the crisis in Syria is supporting the Syrian people's right to decide their future without foreign interference. At a press conference today aired by Al Alam News Channel, the Foreign Ministry spokesman Rami Mehman Paris reiterated his country's stance which supports the democratic track in Syria through national dialogue. He added that supplying the opposition in Syria with money and weapons to carry out terrorist acts is conspiracy against the Syrian people. The Iranian official pointed out that the rest of countries in the region might be the next target of such conspiracy. Venezuela's science minister Jorge Arieza announced that the health condition of President Hugo Chavez is stable, calling not to believe in ill-intentioned rumors. Arieza, who is married to Chavez's daughter, said 
that the Venezuelan president spent yesterday quietly and stable, accompanied by his daughters. Chavez had suffered from health complications after a surgery he underwent in Cuba on the 11th of December, which was the fourth surgery within 18 months. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more information about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. And now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam after a short break. Happy New Year and God bless Syria. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Minister of Economy affirmed that the Ministry's plan last year included activities and decisions related to the national industry, especially a decision that sets the prices of the imported clothes and two other decisions regarding the approval to establish a factory for the production of urea fertilizer and a study for the economic feasibility to manufacture sugar. On the other hand, the Ministry also approved establishing the functional and financial program within a timetable to complete the refinery, filtering and packaging project of olive oil with the Venezuelan side. The Ministry pursued a number of issues and matters related to the industrial activities, such as collaborating with the Regional Planning Commission in considering industrial development and sp supporting small and medium projects, as well as solving the employment situation. It also focused on working to solve issues regarding its company's infrastructure, mechanisms and production lines, human cadres to increase the income, and develop workable solutions. It also also studied the situation of stalled companies and chose new strategic industrial activities with added values. The General Company for Bakeries stressed that its activity during the year 2012 was, was outstanding as it was able to support all areas in spite of the stopping of some bakeries. The company in a statement showed that the productivity included producing 462,600 tons, while 900,000 tons were implemented. So the implementing rate was 140 percent. As for the investment plan, the company commissioned its branches in the governorates with the implementation noting that the allocation for the company was 37.5 million Syrian pounds. The execution was 100 percent and there were 100,000 workers. The statement indicated that 13 branches which belonged to the company were following up the work of the bakeries. A merchant ship came from India to Latakia port with a cargo of a of 20,000 tons of sugar for the general establishment. While the governor of Latakia was following up the workflow in Latakia port and watching the mechanism of uploading the imported sugar ship, as he structured the need of, to accelerate providing enough trucks to ship, uh, to ship the required quantities, a statement estimated at 1,500 tons, counting on the public and private sector's trucks whereas all possible facilities were given to speed up the shipping process in order to deliver the amounts to all the Syrian governorates. The productive and marketing indexes of the general establishment for textile showed an actual production of 16 billion and 500 million Syrian pounds from the plan, which was over 31 billion Syrian pounds implementing 5,200 Syrian pounds till last November. The establishment mentioned the existence, existence of some pitfalls of about 6 billion and half Syrian pounds, whereas sales distributed to internal sales of about 14 billion and 6 million Syrian pounds with 67 percent implementing, increasing 1 billion and 8 million Syrian pounds, while the implementing rate of the exports approached 13 percent. Futures of the U.S. crude ended the year 2012 with an annual loss of about 7.1 percent after three consecutive years high. Stocks 
hosted the biggest annual rally in three years as the European Central Bank's program to purchase bonds of the region's weakest economies helped to ease the concern about the euro area which may fracture. Moreover, the unprecedented central bank stimulus sent global stocks to the biggest annual rally in three years, beating bonds, commodities and the US dollar by the most since 2009, as shares surged from America to Germany and Venezuela. The US dollar fell against most of its biggest peers as President Obama said that the Congress is close to a deal to protect all but top earners from a tax increase as a part of a deal to avert the fiscal cliff. On the other hand, the yen weakened to a 28-month low against the greenback after the finance minister Taro Azo told reporters at a December 28th briefing that the US should have a stronger dollar. Why the 17-nation euro fell against most of its 16 major peers, as the German Chancellor Angela Merkel said that the region's debt crisis was far from over. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Happy New Year. Bye-bye.